that was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were killed at Stonewall. Nobody was no. killed. What's up guys, so before I start the video, I wanted to provide you guys with a channel update. As you know, I don't upload frequently due to the amount of work that goes into putting together each of my videos. That being said, I've decided to start making a new series in my channel called Green Gate Quickies, or GGQs, which will consist of shorter videos that focus on one concise storyline and don't have a lot of editing done to them. But don't worry, I'll still be putting out the long form content that you all love with all the research and fun editing throughout. But these quickie videos will allow me to upload extra content for you guys while you wait for my higher quality videos. Now, let's begin. In the franchise's history, there's been a lot of moments that are able to withstand the test of time, although not all of them have been for good reasons. The season 10 finale took place in June of 2018, which would go on to feature the butterfly fiasco that turned into one of the most infamous moments of the franchise. Yet in order to better understand what happened, we need to go back to season 9, which featured the first ever lip sync for the crown. In regards to why Drag Race would introduce the twist of the lip sync for the crown, there are many speculated reasons. The first is that back when season 9 was airing, the show had come under a lot of scrutiny for each season having a winner that was too predictable, with most seasons resulting in the queen with the best track record winning the season. In season 9, Shay went into the finale with 4 wins making it seem like yet again Drag Race would have another obvious winner. So, by introducing the lip sync for the crown, it would add stakes to the finale, making the outcome a lot less predictable for the viewer. Another speculated reason for the lip sync for the crown was due to season 9 having a lot of bad lip syncs. So, the show would be able to highlight the importance of lip syncing when it came to Drag Race by incorporating it into the finale. But, I don't necessarily agree with that theory. I mean, yeah, sure, we had bad lip syncs like Charlie Hyde standing in one spot for the whole song or Valentina not knowing the words. But we also had Aja vs. Nina, both of Peppermint's lip syncs, and even Aja's performance against Kimora Black. Although the most believable theory is that the reason Drag Race introduced the lip sync for the crown was due to the pressure from VH1 that had become the new network for the show earlier that year. Which is a pretty important thing to take note of. Season 9 was filmed over the summer of 2016, which is when Logo TV was still the official network for Drag Race. However, the season would end up airing in the spring of 2017. But during the months between the filming and airing of Season 9, RuPaul's Drag Race switched from Logo TV to VH1. And VH1 had a lot more bigger ambitions for what Drag Race could end up becoming which is why they definitely influenced a lot of production choices that the show would end up making. Some fans have argued that perhaps Logo TV was also planning on doing a lip sync for The Crown, considering that the last episode to be filmed under their network was Season 9 Episode 12, where by the end of the episode, RuPaul announces that for the first time in the main series history, all the queens in the top four would be moving on to the finale. However, production had also filmed alternate endings for that episode which included an ending where Peppermint was eliminated and placed fourth. Additionally, the queens from the season 9 top 4 were only told a couple weeks before the finale that there'd be a lip sync for the crown. So it's pretty fair to assume that VH1 was the driving force behind the lip sync for the crown twist. VH1 becoming Drag Race's main network in 2017 would cause a complete shift in the show. It is after VH1's takeover that World of Wonder began to produce All-Star seasons back to back, with All-Stars 3 being the first All-Stars to be produced by VH1, which would go on to feature yet another big format twist with the jury of the queens that picked who the top two of the season would be. But back to the main topic of the video, the season 9 finale was the first time we saw the lip sync for the crown format in action. The first lip sync would be Trinity against Peppermint, which resulted in Peppermint winning and Trinity being eliminated. The second lip sync would be between Shea Coulee and Sasha Velour, with Sasha's rose petal reveal solidifying her as the winner of not only the lip sync, but of the finale and ultimately allowing her to win season 9. And while it's true that Shea Coulee had the better track record, Sasha Velour's win and lip sync for the crown format would represent a huge shift in the franchise's trajectory. The twist now meant the track records will only get you as far as the finale. From that point, anybody who makes it to the finals has a chance at winning the crown by participating in the lip sync for the crown. 
Although the focus of the show was no longer the lip syncs themselves, but instead it was the stunts that could be pulled during the performance. Especially since Sasha's rose petals were now the new standard for a final performance making the stakes extremely high for the next group of girls that would have to participate in the finale. Which brings us to the season 10 finale, which would feature the second ever lip sync for the crown. The queens competing were Eureka, Aquaria, Asia O'Hara, and Cameron Michaels. Once we saw the top four queens in their lip sync outfit, it was extremely obvious that we were all gonna be in for quite the treat. Considering Eureka and Aquaria were covered in obvious reveals, Cameron had a tearaway, with Asia arguably having the most intricate costume. After doing the spin of the wheel, it was revealed that Cameron Michaels would be lip syncing in the first round, as she then chose to lip sync against Asia O'Hara. Asia was wearing a dress that was covered in butterflies. The outfit itself was actually pretty stunning. I remember assuming there was some type of reveal under there, but I wasn't sure what. Asia and Cameron would end up lip syncing to Nasty, by Janet Jackson. At the start of the performance, both girls were pretty equal, with Asia getting a little bit in the lead when she revealed a mini sponge to wipe her face with. This would be the first and only successful reveal of the night for Asia. The fiasco began when Asia opened a small contraption on her left wrist, which didn't really reveal anything. The show would then cut to the queens looking really puzzled from the audience. Throughout the rest of the performance, Asia would attempt three more additional reveals that would all end up failing, which included her throwing the two containers on her breast into the air and the last remaining contraption on her right wrist once again revealing seemingly nothing. By the end of the lip sync, it was clear thanks to the cameraman zooming in on the butterflies on stage that something had gone terribly wrong with Asia's performance. It was especially sad to see considering Asia had already been feeling detached from the fanbase, in the sense that despite doing really well in the competition, a lot of fans didn't seem to gravitate towards Asia. Although she did have a lot of supporters which did appreciate her talent. For the fans, Aquaria was the clear frontrunner in the top 4, with Asia not being very far behind, followed by Eureka and Cameron. At the time, Eureka had gone into a lot of drama with the fans, so she didn't receive a lot of support to win. The lip sync between Aja O'Hare and Cameron Michaels would end up being a very difficult thing to watch unfold on camera. As you know, the season 10 finale was filmed two weeks before it actually aired, which meant that because of the butterfly fiasco, Asia would then have to face the rabid fans of the show. That's when fans who ended up reading the spoilers online would flock to Asia's social media to comment emoticons of butterflies, or DM Asia accusing her of animal abuse. The sheer embarrassment that stemmed from the lip sync was something that Asia was going to have to deal with whether she wanted to or not. Throughout the next two weeks, Asia would have to wait until the inevitable airing of the finale. During these two weeks, Asia would be a part of a lot of promo events featuring the top four queens of season 10. However, fans began to notice that she was dressing in all black, covering every inch of her face and skin in a dark material. While there was never an official explanation for the significance behind the outfit, Asia has alluded in interviews that it was supposed to represent the way the fanbase viewed her. Since despite Asia being in the top four, it felt like fans were only really seeing the other three queens. Throughout most of the month of June 2018, Asia ended up going offline on most of her social media platforms, along with a sudden shift in her drag presence all around. Later on, she'd take to Twitter to tell fans that she felt she owed everyone an explanation for how she's been acting the past couple weeks. In it, she states that when she was 11 years old, during a night in the summer, a group of neighborhood kids attempted to set Asia on fire after noticing how flamboyant she was. It was only thanks to a random passerby that the kids were not successful in lighting Asia on fire. She would then still receive harassment from the boys that attacked her for the following seven years of her life. Eventually, Asia would leave her hometown in order to find a better quality of life. The post goes on to say that just a couple days prior to Asia writing this, she was once again threatened to be burned alive. According to Asia, she felt that this time, the people that were threatening to burn her were not doing it because Asia was flamboyant, but instead because of the color of her skin. This was also around the time that the conversations surrounding the racist fans of the show began to gain traction thanks to the vixen calling it out earlier in the season. 
The post ends in Asia discussing how social media is a very powerful tool that reveals the true selves of what people hide from others. She then says she'll continue trying to rebuild the person that she once was. Asia has also discussed while on season 10 that both of her parents passed away when she was younger. So because of that, she would end up taking on the role of a sort of mentor, which reflected in the way that she would help a lot of the other queens in the cast of season 10. Like on season 10 episode 4, where she helped sew a lot of the queen's outfits, which came at the expense of her own, landing her in the bottom three. I also heard a rumor back when season 10 was airing that apparently all the finalists were contractually obligated to do at least one reveal during each of their lip syncs for the crown. However, I was not able to find any source to back this up. But if it was true, it would explain why so many of the queens felt driven to go so over the top. Let me know if you do have any tea on this. Now, the season 10 reunion was filmed a day after the finale, even though the reunion would end up airing first. This meant that by the time the queens filmed the reunion, they already knew that the crown was between Aquaria, Eureka, or Cameron Michaels. And they were also aware that the butterfly fiasco had already happened. Despite this, when RuPaul asked the queens at the reunion who each of them believed should be the winner of season 10, Eureka would end up getting the most votes, followed by Asia O'Hara, Aquaria, and Cameron Michaels. Now, if you watch season 10, episode 11, the top five queens of the season had to pick who they thought should be the next queen to be eliminated. Asia would end up picking Miss Cracker to go home, citing that she didn't see Miss Cracker as a star. Apparently, Cracker would end up taking this very personally because she'd go on to do an interview with Billboard where she discussed the moment from that episode. In it, she discusses how what Asia did was sort of cunty, but that in the end, Miss Cracker is in fact a star because she's one of the most followed queens of the entire season. She goes on to compare the Instagram followers between her and Asia O'Hara pointing out that even if Asia tripled her amount of Instagram followers, she still wouldn't be able to reach Miss Cracker's popularity. She then says that her and Asia now have a very good relationship and have exchanged many laughs. Although in the last question, Miss Cracker talks about how she will make sure to bring this up in the reunion, which was set to film a couple days after this interview was done. At the reunion, Miss Cracker did in fact bring it up, but ultimately, Asia sort of doubled down on her comments of Miss Cracker not being a star. Instead, Asia admitted that she was wrong for saying that Miss Cracker wasn't a star, but instead should have said it in a different way. It's also important to note that social media followers seem to be the main guiding force of success among the queens. So it also brings a new meaning to how Asia felt going into the season 10 finale and what she'd end up experiencing after it was done. Another thing that happened at the season 10 reunion was the Vixen seemingly getting a lot of questions aimed towards her that painted her in a negative light. Specifically, Rue seemed to be talking down to the Vixen regarding her behavior throughout the season. This would result in the Vixen ultimately leaving the set of the reunion and not returning. Asia then defended the Vixen's walkout from the reunion, citing that the Vixen was faced with a situation where she was going to end up having to argue with everyone. But instead, she chose to remove herself from the situation by leaving the room. RuPaul responded to Asia's comments by saying that not everyone in life is going to be able to be saved by others. Sometimes you have to realize when someone is too far gone and not chase after them. However, Asia ended up doubling down, feeling that they as a community are turning their back on the Vixen simply because she's a bit difficult to work with, and that perhaps if there was more effort made to understand the Vixen, then maybe she wouldn't have walked out. Asia also points out the hypocrisy that during Pride season, they were all turning their back to someone who was part of their community. This of course resulted in RuPaul sort of yelling about how when it comes to show business, you have to be able to know to act a certain way in order to receive better opportunities in the future. RuPaul also said that he felt that the Vixen's walkout was disrespectful to the production of the show. They would then quickly move on to a different topic. The grand finale for season 10 would officially air one week after the reunion. Asia would then post an official apology to the viewers of the show, sharing it on all social media. In it, she says that she's very sad about the whole situation. Apparently, she had worked alongside a professional company where they had put in months of research and rehearsing in order to get the reveal done. 
fun. But ultimately, most of the butterflies ended up dying or limping around the stage. I also wonder that even if the reveal had been successful, how she would have managed to get all the butterflies back in one place, considering the performance was taking place on a big open stage. Subsequently, the moment would also spawn a lot of memes that many felt actually was helping everyone move past the fiasco. Asia goes on to state that she offers everyone her deepest apology, and that she would never purposely hurt a living creature, as she has the utmost respect for all animals. She then says that she understands why some fans are upset with her, because she's also been very unhappy with herself ever since that night, but that she'll try her best to make things right. The post ends with her saying that over the next year, she will be donating over 100 volunteer hours to the ASPCA, which is an organization that helps rescue animals that are suffering from abuse. The last part of the post says that she will try her best to continue to be humble, while owning her mistakes and leading from a place of love and light. Asia O'Hara would end up finding a lot of success in her post-drag race career, being one of the main hosts of the Work the World Tour, along with having an occasional residency in the Vegas show for Drag Race. She's also gained a lot of fans since her season, with her being one of the most respected queens from the entire franchise. Oddly enough, many expected to see Asia on an All-Stars shortly after her season aired, but it appears that she either wasn't invited, or the most probable option being that she simply doesn't feel it's her time to return yet. But when she does decide to come back to our screens, we'll all be waiting to root for her. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know how you feel about these new types of quick videos, and if you have any suggestions for future projects, you can comment down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter at GreenGate22, and if you'd like to support me on Patreon, the link will be in the description. See you guys next time.